right, who's with us from far? Yes. Nobody. I just want you to explain. Chris is in Hawaii. I can't believe he's not live streaming every every class. You would have to live stream like 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 Hawaii is like what like five hours. Oh right, yeah. There's a time difference for sure. Like, Tell them the oh, okay. Three a.m. Like, oh, God. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it. Does everyone know about these bonus extra credit quizzes that are open till May 5th? No. You just do them and they add points to your grade. So they are explained here, but uh, it's pretty simple. So basically, they are on those chapters and you answer the questions. And you know, if you get 10 points on it, then that goes on to your huge total. Um, so, and they're just, they're kind of like regular online quizzes, right? Um, so they will go offline on May 5th, all right? So take advantage of them if you're interested in taking advantage of these. <coughs> Getting some extra credit points, go right ahead. Oh, and Rick, I have news about the other extra credit thing that, you know, I'll tell you after because it's not this class. Right, right, right. So again, uh, I'm a broken record looking ahead as to what we're going to be doing. Talking business again this week. Uh, next week, media operations. And we are going to be reviewing on uh, the Tuesday for a quiz that is on the Thursday. And uh, this one does not require attendance. You can sit at home and do it online. It's on chapters 8, 9, and 10. And uh, there's already a review document up here with, uh, I will go up and put the cahoots on there, um, like tomorrow or, uh, tomorrow's Friday, right? So I have a, some time Friday afternoon. There's also this video of the um, uh, publisher's chapters, basically. And uh, I went through, and so the important stuff is, you know, uh, flagged in red. So you should remember these things for the quiz. Like, for instance, there is a question which is, you know, asking you about the autometer, and you, you have seen these in the cahoots as well anyway. But remember, the autometer was rolled out in the early days of radio. It was one of the first, you know, mechanical uh, audience measurement systems that it did better than the telephone recall system, which was what they started with. It was like, hey, what are you watching now? And they got people lying, they got people hanging up on them. So the autometer was like a little mechanical thing attached to your radio tuning dial, and uh, it, they could track what you were listening to. So, you know, the questions are asking, well, when did this start? You know, and so it started in the early days of radio, it didn't just start with television. Uh, although in an, a nod tra to tradition, Nielsen's set-top box is still called, you know, the something autometer. So they've still kept that as a brand, kind of. It goes way back to radio. So you see the important information there that you should study up on is flagged in red. Oh, someone's in chat. Who could it be? Nope, just me? Oh. I guess the ding is like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I dinged myself. So this is in a little video. You can, uh, of course, pause it whenever you get to something that you want to look up or something. There's the, you know, the social networking stuff. So that's important. And uh, then here we go with uh, the chapter we've been working on today. Good Lord. Uh, th I'm sorry, we worked on it Tuesday. We'll be looking at it more uh, today. And we can do a kahoot about this chapter. Um, on uh, business, the, the media business. So, um, yeah, so this will help you to study up as well, and then I'll put the Kahoot challenges up there. Um, let's see. Uh, so just to finish off with where we're going, that's Tuesday, Thursday next week. Uh, and then uh, there'll, be, there'll be a little um, survey there just asking about your satisfaction with all things. Uh, all things related to the course. Uh, so the week after, if I go to the syllabus, I'm just, you know, I do this for myself, guys. But um, it's also, eventually I'll be sending out warnings and emails and everything. But it just, I got to keep on track with all this stuff, as you understand. Um, April 25th, we're having our industry news presentation. So, um, 
I've been talking about this. It's soon. It's soon. What does that mean? It's the week after the quiz. I just want to make sure it's adequately put up here. Does it say here that this is what we're doing? Uh, <laughs> no, so I'll catch up on that. However, it is in the syllabus, and I'll, I'll start putting in the necessary stuff here in, uh, for April 25th. So what actually happens on that day, uh, and we'll prepare for it in advance, is I'm going to ask each person to come up. And that is a mandatory attendance day. So we all got to be here, the people who are still actually participating. It's always good to see everyone roll back, realize you know there are, there are people out there streaming. So um, in advance, uh, you will choose a media corporation uh, and look up the latest news about them and condense you know, one article which has something important about that company down to a 60 second kind of news report. So pretend you are the news anchor, and Jody will give us the hand mic, and here's X on the spot. You stand on the spot and say, hello, welcome to my entertainment news. And uh, this week, uh, you know, Google uh, rolled out Google Glass 2, or whatever is your uh, news item. And you're, you're welcome to introduce a little bit of analysis uh, into it yourself. What I really find great is if you can kind of connect it back to the things that we were talking about in the class. So, and there's many ways you could connect back. You could, you know, say, "Hey, you know, we talked about uh, the importance of streaming now to the television business," or, "Hey, we talked about you know new standards of TV." When I was in NAB in Las Vegas, there were 4K televisions were like everywhere. And now there's an 8K you know, display and cameras. That's what they're selling to the broadcasters right now. So 8K is this, is, this is high definition, which is around 2K, you would call it, I guess. 4K, better resolution. 8K is what they're selling now. So as things are, and you know, you buy a TV at Target and you can get a 4K TV. So it's getting better and better resolution. So, that all of these you know, could be a company that does content, it could be a company that does social media or old broadcasting or technology, up to you, okay? Uh, I do have a, a list, like when I put up the, the, the items in the module, I have a list of like, you know, 20 huge entertainment companies. You know, Apple started streaming, that'd be a good one, right? Um, Monday, they actually you know, announced, last Monday, they announced a bunch of shows and stuff. Um, so there's, there's all kinds, you know. Um, and uh, does anyone have any ideas what they want to cover already? Actually, I was wanting to do Apple, because didn't they just come out with the news, news uh, like news and magazine stand also or something? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that would be good. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that's, uh, in, terms of, in terms of context, you can, you can just report what's happening, or you can connect it out to, you know, anything we've learned about news in, in this when and how do we let you know who we chose or who we chose? Um, I'm going to ask, and if you're in class, it's OK. But otherwise, I'll put, um, I'll put up a little discussion forum. But it's just going to be, hey, just let, let us know what you're going to be working on. So everyone can post in there. Like, like usually, you know, you're going to find, if you're going to work on Apple, and then you're going to find you know, uh, a website or some kind of news or something, so you can put into that discussion, you can put, OK, here's the website that I'm using. Uh, so you don't have to like, do a script or anything, but just to show people, like, OK, this is what I'm working on. And so hopefully, we won't have too much duplication. What if someone steals your idea? It's OK. You know, I mean, actually, what I find is people don't want to steal someone's idea. They want to actually go looking for something else. That's almost always that's the case. What people want to avoid is like being compared against another student who did a great job, <laughs> right? So it's like, oh, I mean, you're all going to do a great job, you know? And if it ever does happen that there's duplication, it's always interesting to see, OK, you know, you, like what you really don't want is for someone to report completely different facts, you know, alternative facts, right? Because that looks bad. <laughs> so anyway, we'll have a discussion, and you just post up there what you're planning on doing. Good, good question, Rick. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get into that next week um, as I get my stuff together and you know, put the necessary stuff into the, the modules. And stuff. But do think about it. Anybody else got any ideas? I feel like I have like 20 ideas. 
Uh, it's always pick, a difficulty. Yeah, I have to pick like a specific one, but it's probably going to be like LA related, like something going on down there. Cool. Cool. Like, just tons of things are happening with media. I'm just going to ask my boyfriend, like, what are they doing right now? Okay, but look for the look for the big things. That's the all. Big you know. Things. Yeah. So the bigger things in Los Angeles. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like um, the corporations like the like exactly the yeah that's kind of that's what i meant by the big things yeah so it's all about business news okay so it's you know what are what are the big corporations that are making moves down there does, right it, does it have to be big business or can it be well, like a, a growing business, business? Yeah. Like one one that's catching on like what's not great is you know my friend has a startup and two people know about it that's that's oh, kind no. of too micro it's like it's like they, they have a own like building, they have like, it's yeah. like tons of people. Where well, well, remember what you're looking for is news articles. So as long as you can find a news article about that, then that's okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Because then it becomes too, I'm not asking for original reporting, which is what you'd have to do if there wasn't a news article. That's but if you, if you have a news article, then you go in and you basically just summarize it. Oh, that's, okay. that's what this is. Yeah. Okay, I thought yeah. I had to like think of a- Uh-uh, uh-uh, no. And that's, that, that is, I should clarify that. Yeah, this is really take an article that you find, you know, from a reputable site. I also talk about that, right? So, you know, if it is uh, conspiracy theories against Apple or Google, you know, then you got to make sure that uh, it's, it's actually checks out. Like if it sounds too amazing to be true, then go look on different sites. Just to make sure. And anything about a big corporation will be reported multiple times, I'm sure. Yeah. Julian, any ideas? I was thinking about it and I really don't have any big ideas. I was I was I was like I was like thinking, I was like, hmm. Because I feel like a lot of the things that a lot of the articles that I've read recently have less to do with industry, but maybe how industry is like coming in and taking space yeah. rather than like Oh, I see. Rather, like rather, in the music business and stuff? They're making. Yeah. Yeah, slightly. I think like the one, so this isn't exactly related to like industry necessarily, but so out in DC where they're having like similar gentrification issues, is like Washington DC, similar yeah. gentrification issues as we're having here in San Francisco or like out in New York. Like I forget, I forget where exactly, but I think it was down by like Shaw, maybe in like Columbia Heights. There's this Metro PCS store and usually they play go-go music, which is like, it's like DC dance, dance music. Okay. And... They switched to classical NPR. It wasn't, it wasn't even that. It was like all these all these new residents in the area basically told them to cut it. Oh. They, and like they've been playing go go out there. Okay. For how uh, effects effects of gentrification. They don't they don't want that music playing too loud. Yeah. Well, they just don't want it at all. And so I think and so there's like there's been like a hashtag response. Don't you DC. And <laughs> since that people have been playing go go even louder in the streets. Like like you know there's. If you walk around DC, like especially like around the mall, you'll see people like drumming on buckets, or they'll just have like you know they'll just have like a snare and a kick drum, and they'll just be going to work. Like those people are starting to like you know just sit right outside, right outside the Metro PCS because the Metro PCS can't play the music. Okay. Like, they're just like doing that themselves, so it's not exactly like it's not it's it's only it's me. not at all what you want to do for this. It's yeah, interesting yeah. news. Definitely yeah. not. Yeah, and that's and that's why I was that's why I'm like yeah. I think that's that's where my brain was going. It was going to like hashtags and kind of like how how like social media is looking at something like this so it's like yeah that's that was the first place that my brain was yeah, yeah. so i hopped on twitter and i was just like so what is going on right now like, yeah like, yeah because you, you said reputable source I, well i like, suggest you go to google news instead of twitter you know first of all because they'll it, what they do is they they aggregate news stories so yeah, you know I was what I mean? just, make just going it to Twitter because like I know a lot of like big stuff will pop up. Like there's all sorts of stuff that like just pops up there, yeah. and it's definitely not like more reputable than Google. Like like, no, like, I mean, like both of them, both of them aggregate, and then you have to go and look like okay, so what is the source of this tweet or of the Google News thing? You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. not because they they actually don't they what they don't want to do is to you know approve or disapprove of anything. They want to be transparent. You know, we put the shit out there or we put the good stuff out there and you guys make a decision as to whether you believe it or not. You know, yeah. that's that's an issue in itself. But and, it, and yeah. that's and that's why I was kind of just like looking because I was like, huh, so what what are people even talking about? What's yeah. even, what's even what stuff that people care about, right? Yeah. Now? Like, yeah. What's rel what's like what's relevant more so than what's relevant. Right. So it's like, yeah. cuz like, I mean, I feel like that's where 
because that's where so much news is. I was just. I, I totally agree. I mean, I totally agree. How, but you know, it just it's gonna make it more difficult. It's the only place um, where like younger people like us like want to even care about the news. We just like, go, yeah, like, hmm. like we don't look on like BBC.com or like. Fox, or Google News, or yeah, Google we, News. We yeah. don't do that. We just go on Twitter and find. Agree, news. agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and so that that puts you in the place of having to be, you know, or you have to decide whether it's reputable or not. So I'm I'm just saying how to how to make life easier for this assignment. So you know now that all you have to do is like summarize a news article that's out there, and then I'd say to Julian, it's like I, I'm going to have a list of like maybe 20 big. Uh, um, you know, entertainment business corporations, basically. I mean, you're even getting the trending topics here as you, as you click, right? But uh, um, let me just think, like, right? If you're into music, you could look at Pandora, you know, search as a streaming thing. And so Sirius XM and Pandora launched Pandora Now, the first Pandora station that streams on both services. So. You know, this is the kind of news that I'm talking about in the sense that, so serious buying Pandora is a, a big move anyway. There's a lot of money involved. And so this is the kind of thing I say when look for something big, right? Um, and so really what you could do is just take my list of like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not interested in music services. Maybe I'm interested in, you know, social media or something. And then just, you know, just go go check it out, you know, see whatever is um, listed and say, do I want to report on that? Do I want to summarize this? Or maybe I'll go looking for another service or something. But you yourself were talking about Snap's, you know, declining user base. And, yes. you, you know, so here Variety is an absolutely <laughs> iron, you know, this is top drawer reputable industry reporting in Variety. Market Watch, I don't know enough about it, but you could easily find out. <laughs> Sorry, what's that? I'm gonna write about that because I know a lot about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So cool. So you know, and then you just click through and find out the relevant information. And you know, and when the discussion is there, yeah, heck, you know, just put it up and say, okay, I want to do Snap's declining user base. Here's the if this thing ever gets through, right? Does it have to be like current because isn't the I say within the last two years. Oh, okay, okay. But, you know, okay? Because literally I've had people dig up stuff from 1979. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I know, I know. But, you know, you'll see six hours ago or a few days ago, that's absolutely fine. Within the last two years. And it's a bit of a bummer when you report something that everybody knows that things have changed since the article came out and stuff. So try to... You know, try try to using this technique, try then to find you know what what is the what's the latest news on it. But if you're getting six hours, you know, <coughs> market watch. Yeah, again, I don't really know too much about it. Looks. Cool. Cool. So this is this is your chance to bring it. Yeah, exactly. But you know, use use these articles for the um, the information that they give. You know, in this class, I know we went to the library and we had you know the research uh, stuff, and it was really useful what Wendy told us about evaluating sources and stuff. You know, the kind of stuff in our class that's really good important research is is this type of stuff. It's like what's going on now. Yeah. You know? It's not like what did some you know professor write about 15 years ago, so you can cite it. What it's really this stuff, you know, because it moves so fast. So that's that's why I like this. <laughs> yeah. So so think, Julian, are you interested in talking about a social media company or about a streaming company, a music company, or something? And then you know go through the big the big brand names and just see what the news is. And, I have so many ideas though. Yeah, it's e it's easier than that way than you know trying to think about you know what's you know what have I heard about because my friends and I care about it. This is more just like more start, direct. Start with a name and then see what. Yeah, and what is the latest news? You know, and Christ, I didn't know anything about this, of course, because no no one can know it. You know, I didn't know that they had a new Android app either. That's the whole reason I deleted Snap because they because they were discriminating against my phone. Interesting. Like, okay. <laughs> Wait, really? Like people yeah. with Androids don't have Snapchat? It's like we had Snapchat, but the thing is they don't care about they don't care about the app on that operating service, oh. so everything's pixelated, it's always crashing, nothing sends. Oh. I was literally like 
there's no point. Like, not only is it like, oh, you have the Android camera quality. It's like, okay, no, my phone's camera's fine. The app's, ca the app's camera sucks on my phone. And it doesn't want to send my snap, so why should I even bother, like, yeah. having the app on my phone at all? It's just taking up space. So I think that's... So basically, they were neglecting you guys, as everyone a, in Android. Yeah, yeah. As, 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 as they had it, so I just, I just cut it all together. So interesting. Okay. Well, you know, I stayed, you know, after, I stayed and then, after they changed the <laughs> after they changed the interface, and it's like I don't really care about the way they changed the interface because apps do that all the time. But it was like it doesn't um, work. <laughs> you change the interface, but you still don't care about me. It still doesn't work. Like, why, why should I care about you? Like, yeah. Interesting. Okay, CJ, any ideas what you might report on yet? Um, I don't know. I was kind of thinking about doing a report on, like, TMZ. Oh, okay. It's like, yeah, that or, like, um... So, like, celebrity gossip sites or, like, okay. Are they in trouble lately or anything? Or? No, it'd be, like, mediaception, right? Oh, it'd be like, okay. It'd be cool. I don't know that. I don't know. That might be kind of rough. Look them up. Look them up and see. Yeah. <laughs> it would be. So... Do you think, is talking about Netflix possibly entering Os like Oscar territory? That's good, too. Okay, yeah. That's good, too. Like that, that's a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, who is it now that? Uh, there's like a celebrity that was like, no. There is, I heard of this in the last couple of days, that um, streaming services suing the Academy Awards for the Academy Awards trying to, uh, you know, leave out, like, like basically they say, you know, we're not going to give an Oscar to anything that doesn't actually play in a movie theater. Yeah. And, and in the last couple of days, I heard there's some kind of lawsuit about that or something. Yeah, because like the movies that, that are like Netflix originals, at, at least that, that have been coming out in the past two years, have been really good. Like some of their own productions have been like, I don't know. It's definitely like increasing oh, yeah. a budget, and and they have like actual celebrities like Jake Gyllenhaal doing a Netflix film, and like and the the, the director of Nightcrawler, you know. Like, they have important people work like being in the movie. Oh yeah. Well, Netflix is definitely after the Oscars, right? Oh, yeah. And they got one with Roma. So, but they had to release Roma in a movie theater. And they, in the past, they have resisted giving their, you know, everyone wants to work with Netflix. They got pots of money and they let you do what you want, but they resisted having like a theatrical release because it's really expensive to do it. But they did it for Roma and they won an Academy Award with it. But it looks like there's still, so Justice Department warns possible Oscar rule changes concerning Netflix could be an antitrust issue. Um, so the logic here is the Justice Department looks for uh, industry players that conspire amongst themselves to create unfair conditions towards other companies. So in this case, what they would be arguing, the Justice Department would say, uh, you know, all of you movie distribution companies and the Oscars, you're all working in order to, you know, exclude Netflix from this very important marketing tool, which is winning an Oscar. You know what I mean? So they kind of maybe have an, you know, a point there. But on the other hand, somebody could argue back and say, you know, one of these companies could argue back and say, hey, we're not stopping you from releasing your movie in a movie theater. And if you do that, then you can be in the Oscars. No big deal, right? We all do it. So why, why shouldn't, you know, we're not, we're not denying you an Oscar because your name is Netflix. We're just saying that we're, you know, the movie business. And to us, the most important part of the movie business is you're in a movie theater, at least for a week, you know. Sales. Yeah, yeah, and so they're just trying to, what, what they're doing is, you know, the movie business has all these interrelationships between the, you know, the studios, the distributors, and the movie chains. They got to make a living, and, you know, what they're saying is, if we give away Oscars to movies that don't even come into our supply chain, we're killing ourselves, you know, which, and they're already in a lot of trouble because most people don't go to see the movies, you know. Anyone got a movie pass? Like the, you know, monthly movie pass? I used to, but like, didn't they like, like, 
they like change something. Yeah, yeah. It used to it used to work for a bunch of different chains, yeah, and now there's yeah. I think it's only AMC has its own kind of proprietary. Yeah. So, yeah. And in LA, like you don't really use AMC like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. That was another thing. So any, anyway, so this is what I just heard recently. This could be one, anyone, but Netflix is doing so much that there's, there's going to be a lot of different, you know, things. Awards magazine for Emmys. Ooh, there's a little celebrity dirt, you know, <laughs> you know the, the fallout from the uh, college entrance bribery scandal and everything. Yeah. So now they're slowing, they're slow, they're slow rollouting her movie and stuff. So that's, oh yeah. <laughs> well, you guys heard they they completely reshot uh, the Kevin Spacey out of that movie about J. Paul Getty after after his sex scandal. Oh, his sex scandal was like particularly worse than like most. Of them. Yeah, yeah, it was. So so yeah, they took they got another actor and they reshot all the scenes with him like within weeks before the the actual release. They should uh, just censor Kevin Spacey like like take off American Beauty, yeah. and, like take off everything that he's in. That's a good question. I mean, it's you know there's there's a, there's a lot of people thinking one way or the other. Personally, you know I. I think there's been a lot of evil people that have done art, you know. Oh so yeah, some people do separate. It's, you know, to me, it's your choice, you yeah. know, right? It's like if yeah, I, I don't think I would like rush to see anything done by Kevin Spacey, you know. <laughs> and there, are, but First. other people might, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, CJ, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Uh, how recent does the news have to be? Within the last two years. Oh, two years. Okay. Yeah, two two years is good. Yeah. And then, and then the other thing is, you know, just give a look if, if it, you know, just search the topic again and see maybe something new has happened recently, you know, that's like, but, yeah, if, you, if you're using this type of approach, you're going to get the latest news pretty much. And so the, the difficulty becomes like, like Kira said, is, is like there's so much, you know, even just about Netflix, there's like, what do I choose, you know? So news people have this idea of uh, impact. It's like basically some stories affect a very small amount of people. Some stories affect like tons of people. And that, that's called impact. So, you know, sometimes you, I don't mind if you pick sort of something that just affects a few people, but it sure sounds more impressive when you have, you know, huge impact, right? Something with like a ripple effect. Yeah, you know, it's kind of, in a way, like, like if, uh, you know, like for instance, um, uh, Disney buying Fox Studios, it impacts like huge numbers of employees, it impacts Netflix because now it has this mega competitor, you know, it was before Disney was by itself was bad enough, now it's Disney plus Fox. So that, you know. And Hulu, because now they have like 60% share in Hulu because they bought Fox. Wow. You know, yeah, know, it's, run crazy. it's huge. You know, it's, it's Disney's, gigantic. Disney's insane right now. So that, yeah, I, I, I somehow I think they're gonna. You know, I don't see who could really compete with them, unless it's overseas or something, like China. Or you know, it's a company there which has billions of potential consumers. Then maybe, but yeah. So so that's impact. You know, CJ. So like, ABC has like a contract with the NBA where they. They have like exclusive rights to the NBA Finals. Do you think they could have their own live streaming service and launch that, like, on their streaming or on their streaming service, like, exclusively? Mm, who's who? Who's involved again? It's the like ABC and like the NBA. Right. Um. I'm not sure. I don't know. Like, would would the league actually sell the exclusive rights? Because right now they have it as distributed on regular television through cable. Plus, they have their own app, right? They have their own stream. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends on whether they think it's good business or not. Personally, I think to have three different ways people can get you is better than just to like, you know, put it exclusively. But that doesn't mean that they wouldn't create some kind of, you know, spin-off or sub sub thing about the league. I don't know what they do, you know, like exclusive, you know, documentaries about all the teams and all the players or all that kind of stuff. You know, there's so much when you own something like that, there's so many ways to package it out, you mm -hmm. know. So 
Because, like, they just recently signed, like, a crazy deal with, like, Turner Sports and, like, ABC, like, individual deals that brought a lot of money into the league. Uh-huh. And now, like, the Warriors, their, uh, their contract is ending with NBC Sports. So there's kind of, like, a bidding war with them with between, like, the local channels. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I don't know, it's kind of, I don't know, just, I've just been thinking about it. Yeah. No, I mean, it's great. I, like, yeah. trying to title it. Right. Yeah. Um, just again, look in the news for this particular assignment, but that's also just, you know, it's a great example of, you know, just the many, many different levels you got to think on and they are thinking on in terms of a business like that, you know, it's like national distribution, streaming rights, local stations, like which station is going to be the voice of the Warriors here, you know, like which radio station, which television station is going to get better access. And it's like all of that, it's all, you know, it all makes money for them. And, and, you know, yeah, if you have, again, if you have a property like that that everybody wants, uh, it's incredibly lucrative, you know. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, if you're a broadcaster, you say, oh, where am I going to find the billions of dollars i got to pay the Warriors for the next five years? I'm already doing it for the 49ers or, you know, whoever. It's like, oh, it's so expensive. But that's mm-hmm. sports, right? I mean, like, could I do my report on, like, the Warriors? And like how they, like, you know, well, like, you know, look, look for, look for media. You know, again, it's, it's got to be. I guess it's sports industry. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like, a sports yeah. industry. But if you think about how it like comes into people's phones, or it comes into oh, people's okay. television screens, because like he's right about how like there's a lot of money that goes into just like just st- trying to stream the sports. Because now it's like YouTube TV. I know YouTube TV. They did a big thing for the NBA Finals last year where they were yeah. like buy YouTube TV oh, yeah. and you can watch the finals in a way YouTube that you wouldn't have been able to do it. I mean, I've watched NFL football games through Twitter exactly. where they Twitter live streamed it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And, and it was uh, like, they officially, would, it was officially sanctioned? It wasn't I mean, someone sitting in yeah, the they audience? Yeah, like a couple billion for the and like right now, to do that. Okay. Yeah, the NBA okay. has a thing right now where they allow fans to pick a certain game like during the week on Wednesdays and like the, the top vote, like, uh, it's played on NBA TV, so I don't know. They have like that interaction, I guess. So like, interesting. People can start to vote on what they want to watch. Okay, so it, you know what? What's difficult that I'm finding here is that there's so much news about the Warriors as a sports team. Mm-hmm. It's hard to find, you know, the the stuff about the Warriors as you know a media franchise or whatever. So that's kind of what you need to look for. Okay. If you if you you know want to write about the Warriors, but it's like you gotta dig a little deeper to find out exactly what's going on with uh, you know with their media, you know, and so you can probably you know again search like, Warriors. Like, you know, like advertising or like media. That could be something, you know. It, it all and it's really open, so it's, it's like, good. Yep. Yeah. They have like a deal with Rackinson for like the the patch on their jersey. Like they pay like thirty. Thirty million dollars a season to have that like patch on the jersey. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Like soccer sponsors. Incredible. Yeah. Like those sponsorships are like a. There's no cap on what they can do with that. Like some teams Whoops. have like five, like five million dollar deals. Like the Kings used to have like. Seven. So I'm not sure how to filter on this site, but yeah, what what you want to do is like search Warriors and then see if you can just filter down to like entertainment or business. Mm-hmm. So what you're trying to narrow down into is to find out like media, what's going on there, you know. But I'm sure you'll find, I'm sure you'll find stuff. There was one here which probably is, you know, again, it, it doesn't make it easy to have this kind of, you know, desire, but there was one here, something about, um, said something like mental health and stuff as well as it was just just talking about where did it go I should have I should have opened it up while that's that's a problem when you're like searching and you do the same search and you can't find it like 10 seconds later anyway go for it but that's that's the thing so so as long as it's media related uh, uh, you know you can check whatever like my example is always Disney it's like Disney owns so much media but the theme parks are not really part of our you know our interest in this class, you know, and so social media is, is um, but like maybe, uh, you know, <clears throat> theme parks, it's, it's going a little far, although it's all integrated. You know, but. So 
give it give it a little more thought. And like I say, Google News and just like Google, start Googling and say, eh, you know, I couldn't find that, but I found something interesting. So I'll just work on that. And it's no big deal. It's not original reporting. It's really just like, let's hear 60 seconds of what's going on. And uh, when the class had, you know, a lot of students in it, and it may still, I'm not sure, <laughs> keep chatting. Uh, it was always, yeah, that's the formula. It's a little weird here sometimes, you know, but then everyone comes in, it's like, phew, okay, there still is. So sometimes you'll get like, I don't know, like everyone last semester, is, it was all stories about streaming. And it's really interesting because that shows you kind of that's what's going on as well, you know, it's like, it's all going to streaming. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everyone's jumping into streaming. Yeah, yeah. Apple. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, why would they? I don't know why they would do that. But Did you hear about what? Apple TV is a big product for them. Never been a content company. Yep, true. About what, what Criterion did like a week ago. They like, like there was this thing. I they, they, sorry, they are a movie distributing company, yeah, right? Yeah. They like there's this other thing. Like a month ago, they like closed down this site that had a bunch of like old movies. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like a bunch of film books. Criterion Collection, and, yeah. Yeah, and then Criterion basically re-released it, but I'm sure there's a paywall, or like a price. Oh, yeah, pay. yeah. But like, it's for all the old movies that was originally free to watch, and now they re-released mm. all the old movies, but you have to pay to see them. Oh, OK. I, I mean, Criterion has been, um, there was this site called Filmstruck. Yeah, it was Which that is, one. So that's the one that got closed down. So they had a lot of Criterion yeah, stuff. Uh, so Criterion Channel gives classic films new streaming life after Filmstruck demise. Thank you. I'm going to be a client. I was heartbroken that Filmstruck was going yeah, down. A bunch but, of people. Because I'm like an old, an old film buff, OK? So now there's Criterion Channel. But let me just tell you one other thing is if you at our library, um, through our library, so you all have access to it now, but also through your local library, there's something called Canopy. Jody and I were just talking about this. There's Canopy and there's Hoopla, okay? So Canopy has uh, a lot of the Criterion, like a lot of the best of the Criterion movies are already available to you. If you go to our library website and you search them, you can stream them through Canopy. And I don't know if we have Hoopla, but San Francisco Public Library does too. So they have a lot of books and they have a lot of movies. That, so basically what they do is they're companies that go to whoever, you know, they go to Criterion and they say, okay, you know, make a deal for us. We want to make 30 of your best movies available in libraries. And so they buy the rights and then they sell to our library, you know, for a monthly fee, they, we get Canopy. And it's really reasonable. So it's free for you guys if you want to see some of the best old movies that were ever made. And um, you know, I'm, I'm a real buff. But I'm going to check this out. Thank you, Kira. Because yeah. everyone was saying about Filmstruck. See, see, the thing is, a lot of these movies no longer even go to be DVD or yeah, Blu-ray or something. We're so sure. like, shook. Like, yeah. like, they can't find these anywhere. Like, That's no right. going to post that on like, one, two, three movies, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. Gonna do it's that. all pirated new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that is that's great news for me. Okay, made my day. Thank you. All right. So we should we should get on to uh, uh, this incredibly uh, detailed chapter. Um, so let's see. I had a couple ideas as to how to how to approach this. Basically, one thing we can do is teach the test. You know, which is always a good idea. It's like if there's so much content we'll all get totally bored. We can also just cover the content which is important to the test. And another thing is I could give you a couple of really big ideas that, you know, like last class I gave you what I consider a big idea, which is, you know, you can understand a fair bit about the media business if you just look at the revenue model, right? And so we talked about, we talked about individual sales, we talked about sponsorship, yeah, right, we talked about ad supported, uh, and there are, you know, some, you know, my old teacher used to call it the club model, but uh, it's basically subscription. That uh, he didn't, he thought he was being original, so <laughs> subscription, right? So if you look at this, you know, you can then start to understand a good deal about any media company if you just figure where does the money come from, you know? 
And then a lot of media companies get it from different sources, like any cable company like Comcast, right? You have to subscribe, but they also get ad revenue, you know? And if you look at, it, again, you know, a streaming service, you're subscribing, but usually they're also getting some kind of ad revenue, you know? Sponsorship, if you like podcasts, that's happening that way. If you're buying stuff through, like, like iTunes is a great idea. You were saying that you know Apple has never been in the content production business. That's true, but Apple before the iPhone, probably its greatest business move was to you know destroy the music industry by selling songs individually for 99 cents through the iTunes store. You know, so that has worked out well for them on a sales model. You know. And then when they got competition from Spotify, well, they could do Apple Music, you know, so they had their own subscription service. And so, you know, most businesses, you can see them kind of uh, doing many things at once, you know. And CJ, if you're looking at a sports team, you know, there's definitely going to be different, different ways. Of course, they're selling tickets, right, or even, you know, mediated access to games, but you can subscribe to get it so on and so forth. So, so it's good to know, you know, that. That's what I call one, one important big idea, you know. And even, even, like, it explains, like, HBO. Why do they have these big shows that they cancel after every three years? It's because to get more subscribers, people don't subscribe to see. Even Game of Thrones, you know, has been solid for them. And they're desperately searching for a new Game of Thrones about to go. Um, but what they need is new stuff all the time to get people subscribing, you know, because people will unsubscribe at the end of Game of Thrones, you know, they're going to say, okay, I don't care for any of the other stuff. I'm gone, you know. And so then you need something new to get them to come back. So it explains why HBO is so different than ABC, you know, or NBC and stuff. So that's a big idea. Another big idea, and we had this last class. Another big idea is consolidation. You know, this general tendency for media companies to buy each other. Uh, and, um, you know, the, as we saw up in, you know, whatever piece of news it was uh, about, um, it wasn't Snap. It was uh, oop, 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 oop. Uh, the Justice Department getting involved in that little story about Netflix and the Oscars and stuff. So, um, you know, basically, whenever these big media companies want to um, merge, um, it gets reviewed, and the impact on the competitive market is appraised, you know? And so, like, a big acquisition, like Disney buying Fox, is always uh, questionable as to whether the government will let it go through simply because it takes away from the diversity of ownership and they tend to feel like, okay, sooner or later there's only going to be one company dominating entertainment. It's probably Disney. You know, and they'll say that's not a good thing. You know, it's, it's almost a surprise that that sale went through so smoothly. And some people even say, well, that's because you know, Fox is owned by Rupert Murdoch and you know, the Republicans are so, you know, that's such an influential marketing channel for them, basically, that uh, they, they weren't going to cross Rupert Murdoch. Um, who knows? But we've seen it. Uh, you know, when AT&T wanted to buy Time Warner, that was held up for quite a while as they thought about, you know, should we allow the nation's biggest phone company with a huge satellite service to buy, you know, the second largest cable um, operator? And they did allow it, you know. Um, so in Europe, they probably wouldn't. They're much more interventionist. So consolidation basically meaning, you know, the many companies getting bought up by one huge company. And Disney is a great example of, of that. And um, so that, that's a big idea. Uh, and then, uh, you know, another big idea is this, you know, diversity of ownership. Um, so it's. It's pretty much, you know, kind of a, a, a widely held belief in government and stuff that things are better if you have more owners, you know, different. If you, to them, and maybe I want to know what you think about it, uh, allowing one company to own a lot uh, concentrates too much power in the hands of that company. 
What do you think about that as a general principle? And you may not care about it at all. So this is just a question just to see, is this something you want to discuss? Can I, can I hear the question and the answer? Yeah. Do you agree with large parts of our government uh, that um, having a very few owners owning everything in the media entertainment business is a bad thing? That, that is a bad thing. Why do you think so? Because if they're government people, first of all, why do you care? Like, why do you even care about media? Like, why are you trying to control it? Like, that means that you could censor it whenever you want because you're like some... Uh, 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 okay, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, so the reason why they care about it is, is they view part of their role, uh, the Justice Department or the Federal Trade um, uh, Commission, they view part of their role as creating the... Um, an environment where you know uh, different companies can thrive because what, what they feel is that um, it, if 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 you're a small company and you can't enter into a business because it is so dominated by one or a few really big companies, then that means that business can't develop and give new things to people because it's too hard for them to get in there and compete. So, so that's the logic. They're, they're not interested, I think, in putting down anybody so much as sometimes they take a look at a big company like that and they say, ah, you're too powerful. Let's split you up into a couple of smaller ones so that other companies can actually come in and join up. They're not going to censor anything, though? Well, they, 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 they can't, basically, uh, because the government, there's this First Amendment to the Constitution which says that the government cannot control the speech of, of you know, individuals. And you know, even where the government with the FCC, right? So oh, yeah. remember the FCC is the part of the government that can actually control speech through broadcasting. But every time you know, there's like a wardrobe malfunction or someone lets fly with an F-bomb, the FCC finds them. And then there's usually a lawsuit back which says, you are infringing on our First Amendment rights. You cannot do this. And then uh, the, they have to walk it back. So even the FCC, which is mandated by the government to censor content, very often is, you know, loses those cases uh, where they say, you know, uh, it's OK. You know, uh, people are not that upset by seeing or by hearing this word. So you can't find them for it. So this has happened. Is that why, like, like, like say I made a YouTube video and I have Rihanna playing in the background. Yeah. They would have to take down my video because of copyright. Yes. Is that yeah. The same thing? So well, that's different because copyright is overseen by the Federal Trade Commission. So that's that's part of those laws. It's yeah. already here. Pardon me. The government's already involved. Oh, of course, yeah, because there would be no industry on the on their, their point of view, and and historically, what they would say is. You know, if there wasn't protection for creative people, then the minute you put something out, someone would copy it and do a better job distributing it, and you wouldn't make any money from it. So then you'd say, heck, I can't make a living doing this. So you wouldn't do it. You'd go into, I don't know, selling coffees or something, which people can't duplicate. You know what I mean? I see uh, now. At first, I disagreed. But after learning more, I do agree. You, you've given in too quickly, but, 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 but it, it's good. I'm, I mean, I think, I think now you know both sides of the issue. You still have the ability or the right to decide. Does the FCC do that net neutrality thing as well? They, they were involved in it, and they keep trying to get out of it. So the FCC is involved in that, so yeah. So they're trying to do it. Are they trying to not do it? It, it depends. Well, now that they've gone right wing because the FCC commissioners are appointed by the president, so he has an import, He has put a guy named Ajit Pai, who is he's very. <laughs> do you know him personally? I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> like but it he has a very punchable face. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, there's terrible. apparently there's apparently there's a word in German which is like a specific word like for a punchable face. It's Ajit like a, a one word. <laughs> So he's he's more con he's more right leaning, and so yeah. During the Obama administration, you know, they had p packed it with left leaning people, and so they were trying to defend net neutrality. And now uh, Ajipai is in, and they've walked it back, and they say, no, no, the industry should work this out as to what what, what happens. So yeah, so they are a key player in the you know the net neutrality thing. So 
that basically what throttles the speeds, right? Well, I mean, not directly, but it raises the potential like that the there could be. Thing. Yeah, basically what, it's, it, what it would do is it would allow Verizon and whatever other big companies with huge pots of money, they could develop the internet further into like a you know, two-lane system or at least two-lane. So basically they could say... Or like the cable system where you package things together. Exactly, yeah. So, so what they'd say is we want, we want we're, we're willing to put in, you know, $100 billion over the next five years to make an internet which goes so fast you can't believe it. You've got 8K streaming videos and stuff, but that's a lot of our money, and so we want to be able to charge people for that. And if net neutrality says you can't do that, if you develop something, everybody's got to have equal access to it. Okay. You know? And so it's in some ways you could say, well, the worst we're going to wind up with is probably what we got now. But when you think of all the amazing new things that can be developed, some people would say, OK, let them do it. You know, they're going to put their money into it, and the government sure isn't going to do it. But other people would say, no way, don't do that, because you're, you're locking out everybody who's not going to pay those high subscription rates and stuff. So, so, you know, there's, again, it's always complex enough that there's many sides to the issue. But on the other hand, I feel that it's intellectually dishonest to say, no, we shouldn't be involved in that debate. The government should just get out of the way and let Verizon, you know, put in its 10 billion bucks. And, you know, because I don't believe that, you know, I, th I think that just basically says whoever has the most money is going to be the winner of everything, you know. And, yeah, I, I, I don't think it should be a thing net neutrality or wait you don't think we should have to worry about it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Is, is that voting yes we we wish we wish that you know we wish that it would take care of itself but it probably won't so if we voted yes it would be the good one yeah well it's 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 also but it's very it's very indirect what do you guys think cj uh, no i'm just thinking the same thing as her because i don't know like What's yes yeah. or what's no? Yeah, well, well, net neutrality like, just means that every website, you have equal access to every website. Okay. Okay. So what, what the phone companies want, or the media companies want to do, they want to tier it like the cable system. Like you get a basic package, then like medium tier, then top tier. And they could also include like the speeds that you have. Mostly we're talking speeds, yeah. 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 But they could also do websites. It'd be like, well, you could go to Google because we have a, a, you know, uh, what do you contract with Google, whatever? I agree. So you can I go agree. to Google.com, but you can't go to Yahoo.com. Yeah. Could, I mean, it's a, it's a I very agree. deep issue. Yeah, it's like, true. But, but I, right I, I think practically it would more be speed that would, would it be the yeah. ultimate. You want to be able to use the internet like you've been using it? Yeah, yeah you want okay. it. You want that? Yeah. 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 It's well, that's very well described. Rick, Rick has described it very well. Unfortunately, you know, the, the, the greatest defender of net neutrality could be the FCC. And as you know, again, the conservative ideology is to leave it up to business. So, so then it's like, yeah, but, but you, can, you can't even, it's so indirect. Like you vote for a politician and then you wonder how the politician is going to treat the FCC, you know, and so it's the executive that appoints the members of the FCC. So if it's a Republican president, he puts in agit pie. But it's, it's also Congress that funds the FCC. So let's say, for instance, we elected a Democrat, uh, OK, president. So they could then you know, appoint more liberal members to the FCC who would be friendly to net neutrality. But a Republican Congress could say, OK, let's take away all their budgets so there's only 10 people that work at the FCC. Then they practically can't do anything. You know, so, and so it's all really indirect as to what kind of actual con control any citizen has over it. But, but that's largely how it goes. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Anarchy now. Yeah. You know, the, and the other thing is we may get all the goodies anyway. Like, let's say they force net neutrality, then Verizon still, and, you know, I'm, that's a shorthand for everybody who wants to invest in new internet infrastructure that goes fast. But... You know, let's say they'd say, OK, it's just so profitable that we really don't care. We will raise everybody's vote and we'll obey net neutrality, you know, and hopefully later on we can bribe the next government in order to, you know, get, get what we want, right? But for now, we'll increase everybody's speed and give them all like high speed video through their mobile phone, and, which is what a big deal is going to be, or allow them, you know, super high resolution interactive gaming 
over any platform, you know. So they, they could build that and because they're gonna invest anyway, and then later on manipulate things to make sure they get the profit they want, you know. So so have, saying yes to net neutrality doesn't necessarily mean that we're not gonna get the goodies, and it also doesn't necessarily mean that net neutrality will exist, you know, forevermore in the future. That's so it, it's complicated, right? It's always going to be like a topic now. I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. You know, but if you think about it, before what we used to have, you know, with three or four networks, you know, we were frozen out. We we didn't have so much choice. We didn't have, you know, we we just had to have their shows that they showed us. You know, so so in a way, we're all winning. In you know, um, but it's just we want to keep winning. <laughs> That's, I guess, that's it. I don't know. There's a lot of issues tied to all of this. This, you know. Um, well, hey, teach the quiz, right? I don't know. We're, it's, it's, this is being interesting as as some discussions yeah, and stuff. Yeah, like 15 minutes. I know, but I think I think we can get I think we can get the teach the quiz ideas out there anyway. Within 10 minutes, okay, let's go. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah, <laughs> if let, let, how could I put it? If we give up, then. You know, it's going to be even more of a farce than the quiz. It's like, do it at, like, hyper speed. Well, okay. Or, or you know, I could try to, you know, we do know, we talked history-wise, that NBC was too powerful. So, you know, we just talked about the big idea here that, like, Justice Department or the FTC looks at something and says, whoa, you're too powerful. This is exactly what happened to NBC in the 1940s. They said, you're too powerful. You know, divest, and so NBC basically cut itself in two thirds and gave away a third, and that's what became ABC, right? And it struggled forever, but as you see now, it's very competitive. So that was the result of exactly what we were talking about. You know, NBC being forced to divest. So that was that was useful. What am I doing here? Am I actually able to? Um, can I? Wow. And no. Uh, Are these the only two slides you can access? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm advancing. I guess this, this little thing advances five seconds every time. So we talked about that picture, right? That's a, that's a better picture than my triangle model. So it basically, ugh, it's, it has networks, programs, advertisers, the FCC, and the syndicators are a little extra there, but whatever. Okay, let's go on with this. We'll get to another topic, I'm sure. Here we are, competing for a license. OK, so part of what the FCC is, does is it, it gives licenses out to people who want to be broadcasters, right? We said last class, you got to be an American. That's why Rupert Murdoch you know, became an American, so that he could buy all of the uh, local stations that became Fox affiliates in the 1980s. Uh, and he, you know, he brought buckets of money from his Australian and English newspaper business in order to do it. Uh, uh, you used to have to kind of convince them, oh, it'll be good for the community, we'll do this, but now more and more it's just money, okay? It's just like uh, either we set up a lottery and you might be the lucky winner or we auction it off. So that's basically if you still want to enter into the broadcasting business, um, that's, that's what you have to do. Now, of course, what you can, what most often happens now is that you know Disney buys Fox and Fox has you know affiliate stations that it owns in different parts of the country. You just buy them, and those stations already have a license. But if you do want to walk up like we did at San Francisco Community Radio, you want to get onto the radio band. It took five years, uh, basically, of of begging, and uh, we didn't have to do a lottery or an auction because we were a nonprofit. You know, eventually they gave us this very low-powered FM. Uh, frequency, uh, but that's the way it works basically. Uh, and for for those with money, either you get into a lottery or you buy it. You pay more than anybody else. So owning versus operating broadcast stations. Well, you know, I just mentioned that when Disney buys uh, Fox, they buy the Fox network, and the network has agreements with local stations. More and more, uh, the networks like to own those stations. So, you know, we talk about affiliates, and so an affiliate station would be like the, you know, KGO here in San Francisco is the ABC affiliate, right? Well, 
Some of those are directly owned by ABC. Most of them are not, but they really like to own the ones, the big ones, in the big markets. And we are a big market, you know, number four in radio and I think number five in television. So here's an interesting story, which will get us away from the boredom of, uh, of, of the business talk. Um, and there is an article here which you can learn more about this. But how many people are, you know, have you ever watched Cron, Channel 4? Cron 4 here in San Francisco? What's that? It, it is, it, yeah, CJ? Well, I'm, well it's kind of on topic but off topic about, like, coffee. Okay, so tell me a bit about coffee. I remember, like, uh, it used to be, like, WB and, like, UPN. Yeah. And I guess, like, when they merged, I remember my, like, TV box, like, the that channel became coffee. Yes. And I didn't know, like, that always exists. Like, did co or was coffee, like, always that channel? Well, it was, you know, when the when they merged, they basically had to choose one station or the other that would be the the CW station, basically. And so um, the coffee lost, basically. They looked at which station had a better kind of demographic around it, and then they said sorry to the other one, and basically that's, that's what happened. Okay. So, and it, it is a huge deal to lose your network affiliation. So it's basically, you get all of the nationally known programming through a network. So if you become an independent, you really are dealing, mostly what you can only show is reruns and whatever you can produce yourself. Um, and so coffee is sort of like, you know, shows a lot of old movies, shows a lot of old shows, right? I remember uh, they started showing like Dance Party. And you know, like my mom would like go crazy. Like, what? That's dance party. It's on TV. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Like, yeah. See now, that's that that used to be of interest to someone like your mom, but yeah. she can probably get all of that on Hulu or on Netflix or somewhere now, whenever she wants. She doesn't have to wait for coffee to show it. But that basically, coffee. Coffee is another great example, just like Cron. So, but Cron, there was more money involved uh, because so uh, Cron. Uh, is originated as the NBC affiliate back in the day. It was the San Francisco Chronicle. That's why it was Cron, right? Uh, that's why it's Cron 4. So they were already a news operation, and the newspapers were huge back in the early 50s, right? And so they started this TV station, which became the NBC affiliate, one of the first big three in San Francisco, right? Actually, I think they probably got it even before the freeze happened. Um, and they were owned by the de Young family, you know, the de Young Museum out in Golden Gate Park. So they're rich, right? <laughs> they can make museums. They own this, this company and stuff. Um, in 2000, they decided, or thereabouts, they decided they wanted to sell the station and get out of broadcasting business. And um, at this time, NBC thought, okay, we want to buy it. Because as I said, the networks want to buy outright, they want to buy the affiliate stations in the major, net, uh, major markets because those stations make a lot of money. And right now, if you're an affiliate, it's a 50-50 split, right? You, you can sell 50% of advertising, and the network sells 50% of the advertising. We know that. If the network owns and operates that station, they get 100% of everything. And of course, they want to do it in LA, New York, San Francisco, because there's tons of business. There's tons of money going through those stations. So NBC said, well, it's our affiliate. They're going to sell it to us for sure. And it looked like they would, but at the last minute, another company, an East Coast station ownership group called Young Broadcasting, so not De Young. It's a little confusing. <clears throat> De Young sold to Young, who paid more for it. On, it was in the like something like $750 million or something. I think it's, the, it's there, $823 million. That was the final sale price. So Young paid $823 million for the station. NBC had bid $700 million. Okay. NBC was pissed because they felt that is the, historically it's the affiliate for 50 years. That has been the NBC station in San Francisco. Um, what can we do to hurt you? So what they did is they said, okay, you own the station, but now we're going to renegotiate the affiliate agreement, and basically we're going to charge you every month to be an affiliate station. We're going to charge you a lot of money. In addition to that, we demand that you brand yourself as NBC4, 
right? You cannot be Cron 4 anymore. So they, they put in, basically they said, as a condition of our affiliation agreement, you're going to have to do everything that we would have done ourselves had we been able to buy the station. And Cron balked. You know, the young media group said, no, we're not going to do that. And so NBC said, OK, you're not going to be our affiliate anymore. And that's it. There is no NBC affiliate here in San Francisco. It's in San Jose. So that's it, right? And they said, not a big deal. You know, everyone who's a cable or satellite subscriber can get us anyway. And so we're just losing the you know, small percentage of people who get their signal over the air. And that's it. So what do you think that did to Cron? Well, it basically ruined them, right? Because they lost access to all of NBC's programming, right? So you're nothing. If you're a station and you don't have that, all of a sudden you're nothing. So they paid 820 whatever million dollars and they got a station they thought would be an NBC affiliate and they lost it. So it, you know, makes way less money than it ever would. They had to lay off everybody. The person, the engineer who designed this room left Cron after that, came to work at City College, finished her career here and retired. And while she was here, she did this entire studio room and everything and our high definition TV studio. Great deal for us, right? But for, for them, they lost everybody. Uh, and so they didn't, what do you do when you have no network programming? You start doing a lot of news so if you look at Cron, you know, they got like four hours of news starting at 4 a.m. or something, and it's CJ? Like, no, I, like, I just started to realize that, like, I, like, I try to think about what's on Channel 4, and it's just all news. Like, it's just, yeah. it's just like Pam Oliver. Yeah, absolutely right. She's the anchor. Yeah, that's her. She's, she's one of the anchors, and she has her following, you know. Yeah. She would do well. She's been there forever. Yeah, absolutely. So what's, where does all the NBC shows air in San Francisco? San Jose. Yeah. Channel three. Is, yeah. Is that so easy? well, yeah. If if you are if you are on if you're on cable, it'll show up there just like as if it was being broadcast here. Okay. But it's a San Jose station. Yeah. Okay. But remember, because of the must carry rules, they have to you know the cable company must carry the major affiliates in each market. The thing is, San Jose is in our market, so it, for if you're getting your if you're getting your TV through cable, it doesn't matter or through any service other than over the air, it feels just like NBC is here with us. So, so that's what they do. They do tons of news, public affairs, basically because they have the staff and they just send them out all day long. Uh, they do like little studio talk shows and stuff. And then they have what's called My Network. You'll see this at prime time on Cron. You'll see a little burn in there. So they get a certain package of reruns or of minor shows through my network. And my network is actually owned by Fox. And it's just one of their, they have like three sort of little networks. And it's really just a bundle of reruns and stuff that, um, that they sell cheaper. Uh, and so they, you know, Cron says, yeah, for three hours a day, we're prime time. We're part of my network. We're a my network affiliate. But the rest of the time, they fill it in themselves. So that's it. And you know, they, they recently gave up that huge building on Van Ness. Um, uh, Van Ness and O'Farrell was a gigantic. It was their old location. And now they have like the second floor of KGO down at the Embarcadero because they couldn't afford to keep up a huge building on what they're making. They got huge debt. Yeah. Like they have like the same like news vans in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. Oh, that makes sense. OK, yeah. So that's, yeah. So, so that's what happened to them. So they went from being a very incredibly profitable NBC affiliate to being an independent station, which you know makes hardly any money. Um, so, and that's the story. That that's kind of the revenge of uh, of NBC. And it, it, it they, people keep saying that eventually, probably NBC will buy it for like three hundred million or something, and have their revenge basically based on that. You know, so. That's it. Oh, man. Sad story. It is two minutes before. I think we should give it up. And uh, so next, next week, we're going to review for 
uh, the quiz, right? Tuesday is review, Thursday is the actual thing. So probably on Tuesday we can continue our lightning, you know, teach the quiz basically for this chapter. We'll keep doing it, all right? Thanks guys, it was less of a bore than I thought it would be thanks to your <laughs> contributions.